And if an officer thinks someone is under the influence of, of drugs or marijuana um, instead of or including alcohol, they will have them do that chemical test, the blood test. They're not going to have them do the breath test. Sometimes what happens is someone will do field sobriety tests for an officer, and then they'll have them blow into the preliminary alcohol screening device. In fact, I have one right here. This is an alcohol sensor for, and they'll have them blow into it. And if it's showing zeros or maybe uh, a number under a 0.08, they might still arrest them for DUI because they smell marijuana or found marijuana or think, hey, this is the combined influence of alcohol and marijuana, or maybe this is just a marijuana case. And then they didn't do very well on the field sobriety test, or they were all over the road, or they're just like looking at them and then checking all these things and, and think they know a lot about this area. And, and so they'll arrest them for D, uh, marijuana DUI or drug DUI. So the question you asked me was, you know, how, how accurate is the testing here? Um, you know, is, is this solid stuff going on? And so the, the blood testing, what happens is they use a uh, chromatograph and it's a machine where a sample, it's, it's actually a small drop of blood is uh, put into a container and the air from that container which, uh, which has the blood in it, will actually go through uh, a machine, these copper wires, and come out with a number. And that number um, is something that can be challenged because we'll get these graphs from the machine that can show that maybe there's contamination. So there are ways to fight these to show that they're not accurate. Um, blood testing typically is seen as more accurate then breath testing, um, but but there are you know there are issues with with um, you know with numbers here. I mean that the, they can come out with a number and, and they can come out with how much of the active marijuana uh, is in your system, but because there's no per se number, they're they're going to have a they're going to have trouble proving it. Um, in a lot of states, it's, you know, five or maybe 10 nanograms per milliliter. Um, and so, you know, that's not the number that that's not what someone's trying to consider. It's not like alcohol, which is 0.08. So it's very, very tough to determine what is impairment and in the testing methods, there's margins of errors here. And it also takes them a long time to do these tests. What happens typically in Marin County is, is they will take, if they think it's a marijuana DUI, they, it, it can take up to a year. They'll send the, the test up to the Department of Justice. They'll ship it over to the Department of Justice. The one in, in Santa Rosa where Marin County will send it, where the cops will send it, will send it to Sacramento. And it just gets in line behind hundreds, thousands of, of tests that need to happen. And I see this all the time. It takes close to or, or almost a full year for them to do the testing. So that's, you know, time um, for samples, things to happen to them. Um, we could check the chain of custody, which every time it goes somewhere else, they, they, that can be challenged. You know, these are, these are cases where, you know, even if they are completely accurate, it doesn't mean that someone is, is impaired by the marijuana in their system because some people have higher tolerances than others. And, and for, um, for marijuana, if someone is a compulsive smoker or an everyday smoker or smokes a lot, um, you know, they're going to be able to not impaired where someone else might be impaired if they're not used to smoking marijuana.